Never fight. King of no give okay. right, right? Go there to the other side. All right, guys. Seniors face the flag. Seniors do first. Come on, let's go. Good. Get the distance. As soon as you get up, get the distance, Mark. Always, whenever you scream, put this hand just to make sure they can know where you're at. Time. Just to make sure. Yeah, not just that, but even the distance. Yeah. Okay. People out there who are competition fighters, what do you think the most common mistake is when they're putting together uh, training strategies? Okay, uh, if you are competing in any, uh, in any discipline, uh, MMA, submission grappling, Jiu Jitsu, kickboxing, anything, uh, it's very important for you to know that uh, it's not all the time that the best fighter wins, you know. I'm seeing a lot of guys being the champions and they are not even close to be the best jiu-jitsu or MMA fighters in the, in the, in the, on the division, you know. So I think a really uh, important thing if you're a competitor that you have to understand completely the rules of the kind of uh, combat sport that you're going to be competing in. You know, um, a deep knowledge of the rules is really important because, uh, like I said, you know, I'm seeing lack of talent and I'm seeing like smart strategy beating natural talent and, uh, and things like that. So I really think that the most important thing to begin with is for you to have a, clean, a, a good and a clear understanding of the rules, you know. After that, you're gonna train on top of this. You know, we're talking a little bit also about uh, how MMA changed when there was no time limit and everything like that. When you have time limit, for example, you cannot do like a, a completely open fight and a completely uh, a fight disregarding the time limit or disregarding the rules. You can't do that, otherwise you're gonna lose, you know. So uh, it's important for you to master the, 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 the rules, master the strategy, what strategy you're gonna do, apply to these rules, and also have to know your capabilities. Because like I said, it doesn't mean that if you are better than the guy, that you're gonna beat him all the time. And it doesn't mean that if, if the guy is better than you, that you cannot beat him. I'm seeing this, I see this every day. You know, so uh, I think it's, it, that's, that's a lot to do with that. I think the training has to be guided by that. And of course, maybe the most important thing of everything besides of, besides of technique and physical condition, I'm not going to be talking too much about that. I think is your mindset. I mean, you have to have the mindset of a champion. Uh, you have to really have a strong self-confidence on you, but the self-confidence cannot be like a, like a cockiness, you know, it cannot be like something that is like a arrogance, you know. You have to be something that you really believe in yourself and you believe you can beat anybody in any given day and stick to that. To touch on something you said earlier and what they're kind of asking here, do you think the structure of the way MMA fights are set right now should be changed, like as far as how long the, the time limits are, or you know, how long the rounds are, or the judging or anything like that? Uh, I think the evolution of the sport, I think what's going on today is that it has to be done, you know? Like, uh, the, the, the people are so even nowadays that if you do like uh, no time limit matches, you know, you're gonna have uh, events is gonna be taking four days, you know what I mean? <laughs> So uh, I think that's nothing you can do about the time. Also, this TV evolved, so the TV generates a lot of money, so they don't want to be something that, they want to see something that's going to take forever to finish. Uh, one thing that I really like uh, to see changing is uh, uh, the way they judge the fight. You know, like I, I'm seeing some really, really bad decisions, you know, like, uh, and you can see clearly that the, whoever is taking that, is, is, is doing those decisions, are people who doesn't have any clue about MMA. They come from other combat sports, but then I have a clue about MMA. And normally the guys who are uh, uh, judging MMA nowadays are from the boxing commissions, you know. So they, they tend, yeah. yeah. So they tend to they tend to, to 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 think that it's kind of like a kickboxing or boxing match, you know. And MMA is like there's more techniques involved in MMA than a, than a Russian ballet, you know, like Hanzo says. So that's a, really essential for these guys to be more prepared and more aware of all the techniques and all the games that the MMA brings, you know. And then uh, I think that's the weak, the weak spot on MMA right now is the, is, the, is the judging, you know. With the Olympics coming to uh, Brazil in 2012, do you think it will be added to the sports that are being held there? I don't think so, unfortunately. I mean, I don't know, I don't even say if it's unfortunately, unfortunately, because uh, for sport to be uh, accepted in, uh, in the Olympics, that's a big, big deal. Like, there's a lot of bureaucracy. You know, they have to have like a minimum number of uh, federations and uh, 
they have to have like a certain uh, uh, proved number of practitioners. And I mean, unfortunately, what happens to Jiu-Jitsu and happens to a lot of other martial arts is that even though we have an official organization, which is the IBJJF, International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation, there's a lot of small leagues, there's a lot of uh, other organizations that they claim themselves as international and they claim themselves as having world titles. This is the worst thing that can happen for a sport to be accepted in, in, in the Olympics. You know, so the other day I, we got, I, I was here and I opened uh, uh, my mail and then there was, uh, I don't even remember which organization it was, but saying World Jiu-Jitsu Championships, you know, and then uh, divisions, three-year-olds, six-year-olds, you know, I mean, it's, it's a joke, you know. Uh, and and, and here in America, it's funny because you see that um, most of the guys from the small leagues that do tournaments are like karate guys. Karate guys <laughs> they are not even jiu-jitsu guys, you know. So uh, the Olympic Committee looks at that and uh, they kind of have a bad taste in their mouth, you know. Uh, they don't see the, all the work that, you know, Carlos Gracie Jr. is doing for all these years to try to organize the sport, to try to make it uh, official with uh, standard rules. And then people come and do a tournament with completely different rules, you know what I mean? I mean... It's like having like a boxing uh, uh, a tournament and another league does a boxing in another, in another rule, you know, yeah. it doesn't make sense. But unfortunately, Jiu-Jitsu, you know, a lot of guys are taking the bandwagon of Jiu-Jitsu and MMA, they want to make a quick buck, you know, and then uh, whenever they're not making a quick buck, they're going to give up anyways. They don't do this for the love like we do. Even if Jiu-Jitsu doesn't give money, me, Master Carlos, and all, all these people are still going to teach and still going to do Jiu-Jitsu, you know, it's, it's our life. These other guys, you know, whenever, like, you know, speeding on distance is going to give more money than jiu-jitsu they're not going to give uh, a dime for jiu-jitsu they're going to be doing for this you know what i mean so and this is putting us behind a lot on that so i really think it's going to be different for jiu-jitsu to be at the olympics in 2012. if you could watch any dream bjj match who would it be and why you could mix them up whatever uh about like different times yeah different time anything um even though uh, it's impossible to compare like uh, fighters from different times because different times have different realities, it's a really really hard thing to 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 do, you know. Like uh, people just think about how it would would it be, you know. But uh, I'll really uh, I'll really like to see, you know, uh, a fight between uh, Halls Gracie. That was the number one of the family for a long time uh, against uh, Hicks and Gracie. That would be, I mean, they're brothers, they're never gonna fight. But I mean, I don't, I don't even see a fight, but I would see like them on top of the shapes doing like a training, you know, against each other. You know, not to see who wins or who doesn't win, just to learn a lot on that. Watch the magic. Watch, watch, <laughs> watch the magic. That's, that's, that would be like a dream. Not match up in a tournament, but a, a dream training or a dream, uh, you know, uh, jiu-jitsu exhibition, I would say, to see. That would be awesome. Yeah. Like what Hicks and Hoyler kind of did that one time? Yeah, Hicks and Hoyler trained a lot, but... Uh, they did one in a ring somewhere in Japan. I think Hoyler, uh, even though Halls was a uh, lightweight also, he was a little bigger than Hoyler. And uh, I think it would be a better matchup, you know. I think Hoyler's too small for Hicks and Hoyler, uh, Halls and Hoyler would be also good, you know, both on the top of the shape. You know, on the, on their pick it would be it would be good. You know, I, I I think you have to say somebody from the Gracie family always. We will all the jiu-jitsu that you know for the Gracie family, so we're always gonna go from them. You know, maybe Roger and Hicks are also will be good. I was thinking that was the first. Roger and Hicks will be good to see. It will be good to see. All right, thanks, Drac. That's it. That's it. Go. All right.